Hey everyone, it's Amalga here. So I kind of haven't uploaded anything for a while now, and this is sort of gonna be a filler video. I'm doing this unscripted, but I feel like you guys might still be like interested in what I'm talking about here. With Smash Ultimate coming up and Smash 4 is probably gonna come to an end, I kind of wanted to give my, share my thoughts on what I think uh, Pac-Man's matchup spread looks like. Before I get started though, I kind of want to explain my competitive experience just so that you kind of know like, I guess the level of information that you're getting here. I have a decent amount of tournament experience with like locals and monthlies. I'm, I consider myself to be a mid-level player, and I've had varying degrees of success. More recently, though, I've been doing better, and I've taken a couple sets off of some fairly notable players in my region. So obviously, this is all my opinion, and you should kind of take it with a grain of salt, but I feel like I have enough experience to be knowledgeable about what I'm saying here. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to try to keep this a bit concise so that this video doesn't go too long. If you have any more questions, though, about my opinions, uh, just feel free to drop a comment, and I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. Let's get started with the plus two matchups, which are characters that have a decent amount of things that they can do, but Pac-Man just kit just is a lot better than theirs and kind of just shuts theirs down. Uh, probably the most prominent example of this is Little Mac, who, as most of you probably know, he doesn't like to go in the air, but Pac-Man can just put a trampoline on the ground and force him to do that. So he either just has to not approach you or kind of approach you in a risky way, and it's not really good for him to not really approach you because you can kind of just throw fruits at him and camp him out. This is probably Pac-Man's best magic, but it's not completely um, unwinnable for Little Mac. It's because he struggles a lot at dealing with trampoline, but at the same time, Mac can be like kind of scary if he gets in. And he's fairly good at catching Pac-Man's landing sometimes too. You kind of really have to play this matchup very carefully, but if you do that, it should be a fairly easy win for Pac-Man. Not really sure if any of the other characters in this tier are worth talking about, because most of them are kind of just characters that get out camped by Pac-Man, or just like big bodies that have bad frame data that kind of get comboed really hard and can't really compete against Pac-Man's frame data in neutral. Robin's kind of an interesting one, because at first you wouldn't really think that this matchup is that bad, but Hydrant and Side B are just very, very good at uh, punishing Robin's projectiles. He has a sword, but his frame data isn't like good enough for him to be able to like compete against Pac-Man too well, and Pac-Man can kind of just keep Robin off stage for a while with Hydrant and Nair. So yeah, this matchup isn't really great for him. Moving on to plus one, which are characters that Pac-Man has a definitive advantage against, but he kind of has to play in a weird way, and his opponents have stuff that they can do to counter him, I guess. There are probably some characters that you wouldn't expect in here, like Luigi and Diddy and Ryu, for instance, but I'll explain why Pac-Man wins those, I think. The Luigi matchup is kind of like the Mac one, where we want to have a trampoline down all the time, because his airspeed is really bad, and he kind of just really doesn't like approaching in the air. Now, obviously, Luigi gets a lot of reward off of his grab game, and he can compete with you pretty well in close range, because his normals are just as fast, and he gets a lot more reward off of them. However, Luigi kind of struggles against campy characters in general, and having trampoline in your kit just uh, makes it a lot harder for him to get in. He's also kind of susceptible to edge guards too off stage. Next up is Diddy Kong, who might seem unusual at first, but Zero actually uh, agrees that Diddy Kong doesn't win this matchup. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean everything, but Pac-Man has the tools necessary to beat Diddy Kong. For one, Hydrant kind of just blocks Banana, so Diddy Kong has to play around it. So Pac-Man can kind of just like um, sandwich Hydrant in between him and Diddy Kong, just run away and like use trampoline to kind of uh, distance himself. Diddy Kong obviously has a really good neutral outside of Banana as well. However, Pac-Man can kind of just distance himself from him for most of the matchup. And yeah, you kind of have to play really lame in this matchup if you want to win. And if you get Banana in your head, you kind of just have to run away because Diddy Kong is forced to chase you unless he has the lead. Diddy Kong's neutral is obviously better than Pac-Man's. However, in this matchup, you kind of just want to I guess run away from him and force and try to limit as many of his options as you can when he has to play neutral with you. And yeah, Pac-Man can win this. Also, he edge guards him really well. There's a bit less to say about Ryu just because like he kind of in general struggles against characters that can run away really well. And when he gets in, he can like hit really hard, but Pac-Man can kind of like SDI out of a lot of his strings and kind of nair him for it for like over extensions and stuff. It can just kind of be really hard for Ryu to get stuff going in this matchup. And like most Ryu players agree that Pac-Man wins this. Even Locust like generally just pulls out Bayo against Sinji. Next, let's get into the characters that I think are even or Pac-Man has a slight advantage against them. And there aren't really too many meta-relevant ones here. I guess I can run through most of them pretty quickly. Wario just generally doesn't have the greatest neutral, but he kind of thrives off of a campy playstyle just because he wants to get waft. And that's not great for Pac-Man because sometimes you kind of just want to approach him because you don't want him to get waft. Duck Hunt is weird because if you saw Retro Arena, you'd probably know that this matchup is kind of just a really obnoxious projectile war. Pac-Man has a bit of an edge though because Duck Hunt's projectiles are faster to come out, however they're more of stage hazards and Pac-Man's just kind of outprioritize all of them. 
Both of the Earthbound characters have deceptively weak range, and they don't really have any answers to Trampoline. Lucas is better at the matchup though, just because he has longer range on some of his moves and can like pressure him from a bit more of a distance. There are quite a few matchups where I don't think Pac-Man or the other character has a significant edge. Bowser, he has like, he can beat out a lot of Pac-Man's projectiles just because of his intangibility. However, he's a big body and has a bad disadvantage state. But his grab can be kind of scary, especially when it comes to catching Pac-Man's landings. Ike, Roy, and Shulk all outrange Pac-Man, however their frame data kinda sucks, so Pac-Man can punish them out of shield pretty easily and compete against them in neutral with his faster moves. Of course though, Pac-Man kinda just struggles against swords in general. The same thing kinda goes for Link, except Hydrant and Pellet Shielding can shut down a lot of his projectile pressure. And then there's Sonic, who is interesting because Sonic likes to have a lot of space to move around in it so that he can kind of spin dash it and then disengage pretty easily. However, with Trampoline, which forces him into the air, and Hydrant being out on stage, you can kind of struggle to do that sometimes. Pac-Man isn't the best at catching Sonic's landings, however, being able to shut down spin dash is really good, and it kind of makes the matchup evolve into sort of a camp fest where no one really wants to approach each other. Next, let's get into the characters that Pac-Man has slight losses against. As you can see from this part of the list on, there are quite a few meta-relevant characters because Pac-Man isn't the best. She is interesting because her neutral, in theory, should kind of destroy Pac-Man. However, she really does not have any options for breaking Hydrant. And this is pretty bad because a lot of her combos are kind of reliant on microspacings, which can get disrupted by the water. A lot of Pac-Man's moves can also trade against some of hers. However, this is still like Sheik neutral that you have to play against, which is obviously very difficult. And also Sheik is one of the scariest characters in the game when she has fruit in her hand and is camping against you. So that's why this matchup is a loss. In terms of Pikachu, um, I highly recommend watching Esam's video where he talks about this matchup. However, to sum it up, basically Pac-Man can do a really good job of controlling the pace of the match with Z-Drops and Hydrant, and he can shut down a lot of the places that Pikachu's trying to quick attack away into. However, once he gets into disadvantage state, it can be really hard to get out. Peach, Olimar, and Captain Falcon all just have better neutrals than Pac-Man. However, there are some things that you can do in those matchups to make it a bit harder for them to get what they want to get against you. Whether it's setting up Hydrant to block Pikmin, throwing fruit off of Hydrant to anti-air Peach, or just um, edge guarding pa uh, Captain Falcon. And in terms of Lucario, Pac-Man's neutral can actually shut him down pretty well. However, once he gets Aura, he can be really scary, especially since Pac-Man struggles at killing. Now let's get into the minus one matchups, starting with Rosalina, who is very overrated as a bad matchup for Pac-Man. Yes, she can down B away a lot of your projectiles, however, down B is pretty laggy and you can kind of exploit it by like Z-dropping projectiles or just using multiple projectiles to cover her options. Pac-Man is also fairly good at pressuring Luma, especially with Fair, which kind of does this weird thing where it like puts Luma into hit stun, so Rosalina can't really just jab out of shield, so you can basically get free damage onto it. And also, Rosalina dies very early and can struggle a lot at recovering against Pac-Man. So yeah, while Gravitational Pull can still be pretty annoying, there's probably a reason why Debuzz goes Mewtwo against Sinji now. Toon Link, Samus, and Rob are all zoner characters whose zoning games are really good at getting around Pac-Man's anti-camp game. Toon Link can just like pressure you with all of his really fast projectiles at once. Samus is um, just really good at like zone breaking you with Zare and Charge Shot. And then there's Rob who straight up outranges you and his neutral special can't be stopped by Hydrant or Side Beast that can really break your zoning game. Mewtwo's tail is basically a sword so you can kind of tell that that's not really great for Pac-Man since he gets outranged very hard. Shadow Ball is also a pretty scary option to deal with. However, Mewtwo dies very early and is kind of combo food since he's so big. And finally, let's get into the minus two matchups, which are all pretty bad for Pac-Man. Mario is really good at breaking Pac-Man's zones for some reason, just because he can kind of jump past a lot of it since his airspeed is so good, or just like cape away some of your projectiles. And it can be like really difficult to land against him sometimes just because of up smash. Zero Suit is very, very fast and kind of just overwhelms you in neutral with her rushdown. Also, Pac-Man, just because of his floatingness and medium weight, is very susceptible to ladder combos. Same thing kind of applies to Meta Knight, except you can trampoline sometimes to limit his ground game, but it's still a really difficult matchup because he has a sword as well. Greninja might seem like an odd inclusion on this part of the matchup spread, however, he has a lot of tools that can just be really scary for Pac-Man to deal with. His rushdown is kind of difficult for Pac-Man to counter, I guess. And his fair is very good at breaking hydrant and just like zoning out Pac-Man because of how far range it is, and it's a sword too. Water Shuriken is also really good at zone breaking. Greninja in general just has a lot of tools that are difficult for Pac-Man to counter. These next four or five matchups are definitely Pac-Man's worst in my opinion, mainly because they all have really, really big hitboxes and just shut down Pac-Man's neutral really well. Marth and Lucina are just kind of cookie cutter sword fighters who just outrange Pac-Man and can swipe away a lot of his zoning game. Same thing goes for Corrin, except it's worse because Pac-Man can't really challenge like a lot of her moves, and he doesn't really have the best options to counter pin unless he already has fruit in his hand. Then there's Bayo, who kind of just outranges Pac-Man on a lot of things. He can't challenge her nair or down tilt or a lot of her moves actually, and she can ladder Pac-Man like super well. 
Trampoline doesn't even work that well for escape because she can actually heal slide through it for some reason. And uh, then there's Cloud, who's basically everything that Pac-Man struggles with designed into one character. He outranges him, he has a Valpair that makes it really difficult for Pac-Man to land against him, and he has Limit, which basically forces Pac-Man to approach unless he wants Cloud to have a move that kills at 60%. Really the only silver lining of Cloud is that you can edge guard him pretty well, but that's going to be difficult to get to happen when you're not going to win neutral against him very often. Anyway, that's going to be it. If you couldn't tell, I kind of think that Pac-Man is better than a lot of people uh, would say. Uh, he does lose against like a lot of top tier characters, however, he his good matchups against Luigi, Diddy Kong, and Ryu definitely help him out quite a bit. And I, don't th I think his matchup spread is better than a lot of other characters who are like lower in the tier list. So yeah, if you like the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for some more Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate content. I swear I'll have a video out this month that like actually explains tech and has like um, more thought put into it, I guess. If there's a matchup that you want me to explain in more detail, just feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to do my best to explain it. And I'll see you all in the next video, which should hopefully be this month.